Hi, and this is uh, Rob from Rathbrook, and I'm here, and here with me tonight, I'm here with me, no, here with me, is Luke Pitt, he's that way. Hello. <laughs> and Steve E. Met, he's that way. Hello. Sparkling. Sparkling. I'm to sparkle as little as possible. Uh, that's why I'm wondering after last week, the, the sparkling I'm most interested in is sparkling mead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'll explain that. See, we were at, we were at a lab fair last weekend where a new <coughs> mead we was showing off a sparkling mead they'd made. Ah. Uh, I had to I had to interview them for the show and have a few samples. Uh, yeah, that was it's a you know yeah. you were required to give them. I had to take one for the team and take quite a few for the team. <laughs> a moral imperative. There's nothing you could do. Yeah. <laughs> nothing whatsoever. <laughs> Okay then, Jed. So we're talking tonight about your Cyberpunk 2029 City game. So, Steve, would you like to kick off just to give people an overview on what's going on? Uh, with the LARP itself? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, the LARP is May 25th. Uh, it's called Cyberpunk 2020 Night City. Yep. And uh, the idea is... Uh, it takes place in a setting that's about 16 years in the future from the, the core Cyberpunk 2020's uh, book, rule book. Uh, it's at a time called Night's Wake, which is the mm -hmm. anniversary of the founding of, this, of Night City. Yep. And uh, it's a kind of party, kind of market, kind of um, truce amongst the gangs that happens once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and everyone kind of gathers at this one market to experience new things, sell things, trade things, do things, and, you know, and you've got until curfew before all bets are off and you got to get back home again. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And it says on your website that uh, you're doing this in multiple venues. Is that uh, true? Yes. So we, we've got it. It's two primary right now, uh, and that is uh, we've got uh, AR-15, uh, Revolution, which is an indoor airsoft site down in San Antonio, Texas. Yep. But at the same time, we are also offering tickets for off-site players. So mm -hmm. people will play uh, the media or hackers or other off-site uh, player, uh, off-site characters that will have special off-site game masters for so that they can do their own thing entirely in the internet, but then also interact with the players who are in the physical play space. That's amazing, because that oh, means wow. someone could play a hacker it, like us. We could do that in the UK yes. and actually still be a part of the um, of, of the actual live role play. Yes. yes. That's amazing. And yeah, and one, one of the things we're really hoping for, I'm hoping for, uh, is uh, we're also looking at people feeding video from the game to some of these off-site players who then edit the map back uh, and kind of do impromptu newscasts. Mm -hmm. So we have kind of this constant live media stream from off-site reporting on stuff that's happening on-site as well. So that that's one of the things, you know, so you'll be sitting there in the game, there'll be screens, you know, up all over the place, and then all of a sudden they're going to flash a news story that talks about something that just happened a minute ago over there. Oh, wow. So right. that, that's that's the goal. That's Well, that sorry, sounds, I mean... No, no, no. Sorry, Rob. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very excited about that because yeah. uh, if, it, well, Rob will know this, that we about a year and a half ago talked about a global LARP, about trying to get several kind of LARPs where something could happen in, you know, Yugoslavia, which then affects the role play in Sweden, that then affects it in France, that then comes to the UK. Um, but it sounds as if you're way ahead of the game here. So, so how many people have you currently got that will not be there physically in Texas, but are actually role playing on the internet? Uh, so pure internet players, we're looking at t only 10 to 12 this year. Right. Right. Because it's the first time we've ever tried it. We've got to get, there's a whole lot of interface kind of stuff that has happened. Oh yeah. Well, we do we do have uh, game masters who you know contracted to just be online game masters, but we're trying to limit it to ten or twelve players right now. Uh, if the if the response is really high, we'll see if we can expand that. But we're trying to limit it till we do it once, and and see how it works. No, no, that we're going to keep it controlled this first time. I mm -hmm. don't blame you. Technically, that's quite a challenge. So, uh, yes, I completely agree. Keep it under control for the first run. Learn from it. 
see what happens in the future. But it's still a very exciting prospect. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Can you, though, Steve, can you, can you give us a taster of some or any one of the puzzles or the missions or combats that you are... Can you give us a taster, something to get our teeth into? Something that you to do. So, so but well, yes, uh, I, I might be able to do that. So just to kind of set the scene on how the main yeah. game space is going to work. We're, the primary game space is is going to be the market. And and this is where you can buy things, you know, obviously trade things. Uh, so so little is off the table. Uh, if, you know, if, if it's not a nuke, you could probably sell it, trade it, and get away with it, and you're good. Anything less than that, and you're probably fine. Um, you know, and, the, and it's going to be a, a full space with, you know, ripper docks and, and, and people selling things, of course, from origin, and they're going to be fixers. Players are going to be fixers. Yeah. And so one of the things that there'll be is fixers will have an ability to kind of get uh, jobs. And then what they'll do is then they'll have other players come up to them and uh, they'll kind of parcel those out based on, hey, I think you'd be good for this or you'll succeed. And then players will have to make their own team. There'll be a little bit of kind of what we call pre-mod activity. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be able to go out and, and do a mod, uh, which will be in kind of a separate space. And now having said that, the mods are not the primary focus of the game. And I am going to describe one in a second. I just want to, I just want to set the scene. Yeah. The, the main part of the space is interacting in the market and all the stuff that's going to be going on there. And there will be plot stuff going on there. There'll be scenes that happen there. There'll be NPCs all over the place. And so that's the primary space. And there are some people who that is all they want to do. And, and, and we are really trying to make sure that for, for that crowd, that this space has everything that they, they want and need in it. Yeah. We know, though, that there are some other people who want to go out and do the thing. So uh, for those folks... You know, we're trying to aim toward what would be a classic cyberpunk run, right? Okay. So let's say, for example, you have uh, either someone who knows hacking or someone who knows jury rigging. Yep. You have someone with a very big gun, and then you have someone who's kind of charismatic. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, and maybe more or less, three is, you know, two is probably the absolute minimum. Three is probably the happy place. Five would probably top it out. And you know, then you go out into these spaces, and there might be someone that you need to influence to look the other way or to not be around for the next 15 minutes. And then there might be a uh, you're going in not the front door, so you've got to figure out how to get through um, a locked barrier. And there are a couple of different ways of doing that. We'll have one way if you're into jury rigging, and another way if you're into hacking. Uh, and then, of course. There will be uh, the potential for things to go terribly, terribly wrong on the other side of the door. W one of the things that's interesting about hacking now is because of the way the Internet works in 2036 yeah. is you can't actually hack into the super secure servers from outside anymore. You have to pretty much be next to them and plug into them and then you can hack into them which is a little bit of a change from what you saw in 2020, yep. but it means that hackers are going to be on the mission as opposed to trying to do it uh, from home. So, you, you know, someone will have to break down the door. Someone will also have to hack the server. Meanwhile, you've got the gun who's you know, got to figure out some tactical stuff in case something goes terribly wrong. Yep. And you have the person with influence who's, you know, in, trying to minimize what goes on if something goes wrong or in the prep in advance too. So, Basically, influence, combat, hackers, jury rigging, all four of those have an active part in any of these side missions. Wow. I think you've just described there with all of the things going on there, an average night in my house. Ah, okay, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. But um, notice on the, the website that you um, – this, this just sounds fantastic, but I think the piece de resistance for me was the fact that you were working with our Mr. Talzorian. Yes. And uh, that – yeah, absolutely. And um, this, this must have been, you know, kind of very, very big, a, a huge influence. What kind of um, assistance did he provide for you when it came to just bringing what, you know, his vision of cyberpunk and, you know, kind of what you know, he wrote especially? Right. Well, so uh, first, he, uh, you know, we've got Jay Gray, who's yeah. a 
right, who's been in constant touch with us, as kind of dealing with the constant, hey, what about this logo? What about this gang? What, you know, those kind of constant questions and giving us feedback there. Sure. Uh, but then we had a, uh, an hour-long conference call with uh, Mike Pondsmith, yep. which was absolutely amazing. He gave us, you know, kind of his vision for how he would like to see it go, uh, where things are going uh, with uh, Cyberpunk Red. Um, not too much about Cyberpunk 2077 because he didn't want to give me any spoilers on that. Okay. But kind of giving us guidance on given that this is 2036 and we know what the world was like in 2020, we, we, there was some stuff that kind of happened in 2030, but a lot of that has been kind of retconned out. So where are we actually now in 2036? Mm-hmm. And he helped give us some really solid guidelines on, mm-hmm. on what the world is like now and what he would like to see. And I think that really helped keep us on the right track. That's, that's yeah. awesome. That's, it's great that you're getting support from, and you're working in, in conjunction with, yes. with, with the manufacturers of the original game. Mm. That, that's really, that's really quite yes. strange. Yes. Although my goal is to get him to sign the book, and I haven't been able to do that yet. So. Well, let's hope he's watching no, now. No, I like it. And we can influence him on this. Yes. Um, if, any, you know. if anyone, if anyone is standing next to Mike Ponson, please sign my book. All right, sorry. Just, uh, just, just nudge him. Oh, you be grateful. I'm a little fanboyish there. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm, I'm back now. But, oh, no, yeah. no, I can understand that. I mean, I, I, I'm going to show a bit of age when I say that I first hit this when I was, uh, I first run the original Cyberpunk, so the 2013 setting, quite some years ago when it first came out, and that was an incredibly exciting game to play. Actually, yes. I, 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 also, to clarify that Rob is now 87, um, so he's been out for quite a while. Nice. <laughs> yes. Oi! Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I, actually, one thing coming from the books, um, from the cyberpunk rules is okay so we, we mentioned all the game all of the character tropes and types uh but in the original game combat was extremely lethal and difficult mm-hmm. uh as in you, it, you had to work hard just to stay alive what's it going to be like in this in in, in the lab version well so uh, the two different spaces are going to have two different combat systems yep but, but it, the end result is, is generally the same. So um, the short version is, so let me, let me talk about how the two spaces are different. Yeah. So in the main market, yeah. which it, that's a very, what we call, you know, kind of a bespoke area. I mean, it's all the combat, anything that happens there, you know, one, there shouldn't be a lot of combat happening in the market because that's supposed to be a truce neutral zone. True. But but we're not taking anyone's guns, right? <laughs> so, so, you know, and they're going to be guns for sale on the table. So there's certainly the potential for, for combat to happen at any time. The way it happens in the bespoke area, though, is it's all 100% consent-based. So if, if I am getting into an argument with another character and I decide I want to pull out, you know, my gun and shoot them or we want to get in an eye fight or whatever, you know, I give them the old sign, hey, negotiate violence, and we talk about it. And, you know, if they're not into it at all, uh, the conversation ends and I just go on to something else. Yeah. Uh, if they are into it, then we decide, well, what level, you know, of physicality are you comfortable with? What level of, uh, you know, how, how do you want to play this? You know, and we, and we basically talk through the entire thing, and, you know, and then we play it out for, for everyone to see, if anyone wants to see it. And it can literally be uh, anything from we argue and separate to, you know, we've had some people who knew each other, who had martial arts backgrounds, who really wanted to throw each other around a little bit. Yep. You know, again, if they're both trained and it's 100% consent based and they both are totally into it, rock on. But mm-hmm. if it's, you know, but one of the things that, you know, literally, if somebody says, I don't care how angry we've been at each other or any of that, because I don't feel comfortable with violence, mm-hmm. the conversation's over and you just go on and do something else. Oh, right. Yeah. This, this right. Is- now, so there, and, and sorry, and in that space, it's kind of a combat number system. So different people based on their cyberware, based on their skills, based on their gun, based on their gun up revs, all that kind of stuff, they're going to have a combat number like seven. And somebody else might have a combat number of, say, two. Um, the guideline is seven should be two. However, 100% con- consent based, if you decide normally that would win, but... I'd like to play out a scene where I sneak up behind you, or I'd like to play out a scene where I've hacked your gun and it doesn't work anymore, and you both agree to it, fine. 
no issue with that. So the, the combat number is a guideline to help set the scene of what would probably happen, but then it's still up to the two players or more to, to determine how the combat is actually going to play out. Mm. Do you find that um, an awful lot of uh, people will actually go for the more physical? Do you actually find that uh, some? I have to say, Stewie and I, whenever we would role play, would mm -hmm. would would go for the full on. You know, ev everything you know when nothing was out uh, for us. Yeah, um, we get all kinds. So yeah. uh, the night in question, which is the one we just recently did, you yeah. saw a lot. Of, you saw anything from. You know, like if somebody was going to feed on someone, they agreed, I'm going to put my hand here and you put your mouth on my hand and, and I'll scream a lot. Uh, we saw people throwing each other around and then we saw other people who were just like, let's go into this room. I'll not touch each other at all. I'll scream and then we'll come out like you did something. Yeah. Right. So we saw the entire gamut of, of whatever kind of physical violence or, or simulated violence that people wanted to do. And then. Um, but kind of, and then combat that happens in the mods will actually involve projectiles, so Nerf-style weaponry shooting at each other. Mm. And then, uh, in both cases, you basically have, you know, four outcomes, n none of which are fine. <laughs> you're you're lightly wounded, wounded, critical, or are technically dead. Yep. Um, and then, what technically dead means until the last hour of the game is someone's going to have to pull you out and do some medical magic which they will do right and then it's just a matter it's it's not a matter of are you going to get saved it's a matter of what's it going to cost you so uh you know if you have eddies on you uh, euros credits if you have eddies on you you pay for it you're good if you don't maybe they take some cyberware uh you don't have any cyberware how's that kidney doing uh, you know so and you know in a simulated kidney would be they draw an x on your back where the kidney used to be, and then you you go do an NPC shift for an hour while you recover, right? Right. So um, there's definitely a real chance for things to be violent and and extremely dangerous. Yep. But until the last hour of the game, unless somebody really really wants their character to be permanently dead, yep. uh, they're still saveable. Wow. That's a, that's a really nice, really lot of nice balance here. It's kind of bringing in sort of the tech of cyberpunk and, well, I mean, the med tech of cyberpunk, and mm -hmm. also how this kind of thing sort of works out as I'm playing. So, yeah, and it does sound like you've built a lot here on the night in question. Is that fair? Yes, yeah, absolutely. The night in question w was a huge success for us. So, uh, <clears throat> And, and a lot of the stuff from that style is the kind of stuff you're going to see in the marketplace. And then we've just added the mod space uh, for, uh, you know, the, the true diehard cyberpunk folk who really want to go on the classic kind of cyberpunk run. Fantastic. Mm. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm loving that. It's marvelous. So tickets are on sale now, are they not? Yes. They yes, are. they are on sale now. Yes. And uh, they can go to Jackalope. Um, Hyphenlarts.com. Can they not to to go and uh, buy tickets? Yeah, the um, form is Jackalope. No, it's Cyberpunk. Jackalope. Dash Larp. Com. But if you go to, if you just Google Jackalope Larp, yeah, that's that right. One, yeah, that you can find it. Now, yeah, I'd recommend yeah. straight from the Google. And what we do is when we put this out, Steve, we'll make sure we got those links up for people just click on as well. So that yeah. shouldn't be a, any difficulty for for anyone. I tell you what um, would be really good is once this event has happened, would you mind coming back and telling us how the online uh, element yes. actually happened? Because I think that's a very interesting uh, element to it because that just broadens the horizon to a worldwide and global LARP. Um, I mean, it's fantastic that it's happening over where, you know, in Texas anyway, but I think what intrigues me is the fact that this is almost global. Yeah, this, yes. is, this is great. Uh... Mm. We've been wondering how to line up sort of that, but of course, doing cyberpunk with its kind of communication that, that kind of puts you in the right space as long as you can handle the technology of 2019. Which uh, mm. it's yes. something you've got like you've got a good plan there. Yeah, no, that's absolutely marvelous. So, what after um, the uh, this this event, uh, 2020 Night City? What what's after that then? You mean what, what LARPs do we have going down the pipeline? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens? Well, I mean, how do you top that? 
<laughs> well, we've got uh, so night in question two is tickets uh, are going to go on. Uh, wait, I think they're already on sale. Yeah, they are on sale for that one. Uh, so that's going to be another night in question coming in the fall, and then uh, we've got two or three things we're 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 looking at for 2020. Um, I don't. Yeah, there are, and there are several options. There's um, we've done a war of our own before, and people have asked to bring that back. Yeah, and, and we're so we're pondering that one. Uh, there is a uh, Cthulhu LARP type style LARP that I've run before, and people have asked us to bring that one back. Yeah. Uh, and then I know Matt has a couple other ideas uh, that he's looking at trying to. So we're, uh, I mean, right now, most of our focus is on the is on the Cyberpunk one because it's so soon. Yeah. Um, but come June, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of announcements for for stuff coming in 2020. Right. Okay. Well, that so sounds we, really exciting. We'll keep our eyes up. Keep our eyes on you for June then. Absolutely. But Absolutely. More, more importantly, see how um, how uh, Night City goes in May. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Excellent. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, look, do you have any any more questions at, at this point? No, I'm just. I, I once you started talking about uh, online presence. Yeah. That's the thing I think that completely got me, um, and and I think that 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 really it intrigues me only because we've been looking at that kind of concept yeah. and haven't managed to find any you know find any kind of LARP. That's not so that I'm out there. We've just never spoken to anyone who's who's tried this. So it would be wonderful to kind of get back. But no, it was it was marvelous to see and thank you so much for your time. Yeah, and for, okay, and for bringing aside from that. So yeah, so I just want to say thanks so much, Steve, and we will most definitely be in touch. So before we go now, I'm just going to stop the stream in a moment. But before we do that, um, Steve, is there any, any last thing you'd like to say or any last words about how people can get in touch with you? Uh, no, uh, I, I encourage people to um, buy tickets early rather than later. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, block hotels set up, and uh, I didn't really talk about the character creation process much, but um, there are definitely some of the personalized character options sell out pretty quickly uh, and uh, they're all personalized but they're more personalized uh, in the in the earlier versions okay so that, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense so if you need a more personalized character go ahead and get your tickets in that's good look yes. any any last ad for you or anything no. to say i think I'm, i've had enough excitement for tonight rob okay then yes you probably I'm giddy. Giddy, right. So I'm just going to stop the screen now. So, so everybody watching us on Facebook, thank you very much. Uh, it's great seeing you there. Okay, and that's us now. Bye for now. Bye-bye. See you later. Ciao.